Revelation 10. Revelation 10 verse 1. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven. John is now on earth as he sees an angel come down from heaven. This is another mighty angel, different from the other mighty angel he saw earlier. This angel is seen as strong, probably because the same Greek word for mighty means vigilant, boisterous in behavior. Unlike fallen angels who fell from heaven, this angel has a controlled action of coming down because this is an angel of God. Clothed with a cloud. A cloud covers the angels like a garment, like the clouds cover heaven or a cloud covered Yeshua when he ascended to heaven out of the sight of his disciples. The cloud was also used to protect the people of God from their enemy, to protect them from God's wrath and to direct the people of God. In conclusion, John is about to receive instructions from this angel that will protect and guide the people of God during the time to come. Rainbow upon his head. Even though the world is wicked, the rainbow is a reminder to us that God has promised not to flood it again. His face was as it were the sun. The angel's face shone like the sun, just like how Yeshua's face shone like the sun when he spoke with Elijah and Moses about the future. The sun's light reveals the hidden things just like the truth reveals a person's heart. His feet as pillars of fire. Unlike how Yeshua's feet are described as fine brass, this angel's feet are described as pillars of fire. Similar to the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night, the fire had the same purpose as the cloud, to protect and guide the people of God. Side note, some have interpreted that Yeshua is this angel, here are other reasons it cannot be Yeshua, 1, the physical attributes described in Revelation 1 verse 15 do not match this angel. 2. Yeshua is not referred to as an angel in the New Testament but is distinct from them and higher than the angels. 3. This angel is more likely the angel Gabriel, who gives messages and helps the people of God understand God's messages. 4. There is no indication that Yeshua had ever taken an oath or sworn by his father, like this angel does. Revelation 10 verse 2. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. The little scroll in the angel's hand is open because the future judgments of God are about to come. Similar to Ezekiel, where the judgments were written on the inside and outside of the scroll. He set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. This angel's action declares his domination over the sea and the earth by standing on it. He is also sharing that judgment will come on the sea and the earth which John is to understand and proclaim. Side note, John was shown the first 3.5 years from heaven's perspective and he is taken back to see the first 3.5 years but this time from the earth's perspective. Where the plagues are seen coming from the two witnesses as if orchestrated by them. That's why those who dwell on the earth hated them. Revelation 10 verse 3 and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth, and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Similar to the other mighty angel who cried with a loud voice, this angel sounded like the roar of a lion to drive the fear of God through the prophecy. If the fear of a king is as the roaring of a lion to them who provoke him, how much more God? Seven thunders uttered their voices. Seven is the number of completion, seven days a week seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And thunders speak of judgment on the world and judgment on the prince of the world Satan. Therefore the seven judgments proclaim the destruction caused by the seven trumpets, with the seventh trumpet being the final and worst. Revelation 10 verse 4 And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven. John heard a voice from heaven. This was not the angel who was standing on the earth and sea, it was not the seven thunders but it was a voice from heaven. The same phrase voice from heaven denotes that it most likely the voice of YHWH as it is also accompanied by thunder, 
and just after this voice the angel lifted up his hand to heaven and swore by him. Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. John was commissioned to share and write what he sees and hears. Now he is commissioned not to share and not to write those things specifically related to what the seven thunders uttered. Maybe because of John's faithfulness, this information was only privy to him. Revelation 10 verse 5 And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven. The angel touches the environments that God created, earth, sea, and heaven. Lifted up his hand to heaven. This angel raised his hand to make an oath before God just like Abram who raised his hand to make an oath. Side note, God raised his hand unto himself when he made an oath. There is also an example of an angel raising two hands in an oath. Revelation 10 verse 6 And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven, and the things that therein are, and the earth, and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. To swear is to take an oath without deviation from the left or right but binding oneself as surety that the statement is true. Yeshua explained that a person cannot swear by something that they do not have authority over like by heaven as it is God's throne, or by our head because they could not make one hair white or black but let your yes be yes and no be no. Anything more than this is from the evil one. They are only to give surety of something they have power over. When God takes an oath of certainty, he refers to his life. The literal Greek term forever and ever is directly translated into the ages of the ages and means perpetuation of forever. Most times in scripture it refers to God, who lives forever and ever. There is none his equal. This angel is not swearing by an object place or an environment but swearing by the highest authority who told him. Making an oath in YHWH's name, such as YHWH Libeth, is only given to those whom the Lord approves as righteous or who has heard from God like this angel. Created heaven. Earth. Sea. Things which are therein. The angel proceeds to declare who the one is who liveth forever and ever. It is he who has created heaven, earth, and the sea and everything therein. He is the creator of all. There should be time no longer. Time no longer does not mean that time will cease to exist because of the following verse in the days. It means no more waiting for the mystery of God to be revealed to the rest of the world as the end of the war desolations is now determined. For an extended commentary on Daniel 70 week prophecy refer to Revelation 8 verse 1. Revelation 10 verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God shall be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Revealing the mystery of God to the world happens in the days when the seventh messenger begins to sound until Yeshua comes to destroy his enemies. The seventh trumpet releases the seven bulls of God's wrath. This is the final woe when the mystery of God is revealed in Yeshua. Yeshua establishes his reign on earth. He will no longer be hidden but openly revealed. The mystery of God. The Greek word for mystery means something or part of it hidden, a secret. It comes from the Greek root word to instruct, to learn a secret. The mysteries are specifically related to something or someone. The mystery of God is specifically the secret of God, getting to know him, this is what Yeshua came to reveal. Getting to know God means to be reconciled with Him, in order to have a relationship with Him for eternity. This is only possible through Christ. Therefore, the secret has already been revealed to those who seek God and have accepted His Son, Yeshua the Messiah. But this mystery will be revealed to all the unrepented when He comes at the end of the seventh trumpet period to set up His reign. Side note, here are some other mysteries spoken of in the scripture. Mystery concerning Israel that they have been blinded in part until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Mystery of the kingdom of God is the secret on how the kingdom of God operates through those whose heart is right. Mystery of Christ is the secret of who the Messiah is, what he did, and would do.
Mystery of godliness, is that, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Mystery among the Gentiles is that Christ is the manifested presence of God, revealed to the Gentiles by believers. Mystery of the woman is the woman Babylon, in the spiritual world, carried by the beast. She has been luring people away from God through riches. Should be finished. It had already started in the Garden of Eden through the seed of the woman but now it is going to be completed. As he hath declared to his servants the prophets. As God has declared to his servants. Revelation 10 verse 8. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. John heard a voice from heaven again. The same phrase voice from heaven denotes that it is most likely the voice of YHWH. Go and take the little book which is open. John is to go and take the little scroll that is open in the angel's hand. It is open because the judgments of God are revealed. In the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. This angel's right foot is on the sea and his left on the earth. This angel's action declares his domination over the sea and the earth by standing on it. The angel is sharing that judgment will come on the sea and the earth which John is to understand and proclaim. Revelation 10 verse 9. And I went unto the angel, and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. The command given by the voice from heaven was for John to take the little book, he did not take it but spoke to the angel. Take it, and eat it up. The angel responds to John, telling him to take and eat it up. In other words, chew and swallow all of it. It shall make thy belly bitter. This Greek word for bitter is used mainly as a heavy grieving anger in someone, like Moses being angry with those who refused to listen. The belly maintains a person's physical life and in women can nurture another's physical life therefore the word is often translated bowels and womb. Therefore, the scroll will make John's physical life bitter. In thy mouth sweet is honey. The psalmist compares God's words to a sweet taste, sweeter than honey. For God's word invokes joy and rejoicing of heart. Revelation 10 verse 10. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey, and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. John carried out the actions given by the angel and as soon as he ate it, his belly became bitter. This Greek word for bitter is used mainly as a heavy grieving anger in someone, like Moses being angry with those who refuse to listen. The belly maintains a person's physical life and in women can nurture another's physical life therefore the word is often translated bowels and womb. Therefore, the scroll will make John's physical life bitter. Revelation 10 verse 11. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples, and nations, and tongues, and kings. The angel spoke to John. Thou must prophesy again. John had already been prophesying about the future judgment to come. Now that he had eaten the scroll, he is instructed to prophesy again. To prophesy is to foretell of things to come. Before many peoples, nations, tongues, kings. John is to prophesy again before. People are those who are recognizable by John, probably Israelites. Nations are those who are denoted by national boundaries, customs and laws. Races are those who are denoted with unique physical genetic attributes. Tongues are those who speak a different language or dialect. Kings denotes those who reign over people of the earth. Don't forget to subscribe.